This year, this month actually marks Woodstock Concert's 50th anniversary. Joining our program this morning is original Woodstock Concert pioneer artist, founding member, vocalist, drummer of the legendary group Sha Na Na, Jocko Marcellino. Jocko, Brian C., it's an honor to have you with me on KMET Radio. Good to be here, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. Jocko, let me start by asking you, what has the legendary Jocko of Sha Na Na been up to these days? Well, Arthur, you just spoke about it. We've done a lot of stuff around the uh, 50th anniversary of Woodstock and the 50th anniversary of Sha Na Na, because we got together at Columbia uh, back in 1969. So our probably our we did a dozen or so gay public geeks. And uh, then we played Woodstock, which, you know, took us from an unknown college act into uh, the international limelight. So uh, it's, it's a great celebration. And uh, Sean and I has the uh, a 50th special edition CD, uh, our 50th anniversary, which is very cool. It has uh, some tracks that have never been released, live tracks and other studio tracks and uh it's a nice package, as we say. It's vinyl, too, and uh, we have a nice aqua color for the vinyl. So we've been very busy, very busy promoting our 50th and, of course, the 50th of Woodstock. Jocko, take me back, if you can, to the start of the group. How did the band members meet and form as a group? Well, we were at Columbia University, and there's a spinoff of the Glee Club, it's called the uh, the Kingsman, the Columbia Kingsman. Uh, of course, when we got going, uh, one of the older, one of the guys, an older brother who basically was a greaser from Long Island, and uh, we choreographed members, and because they had been mostly singing, you know, the school fight song and Christmas carols at Christmas, but now they started throwing in Little Darling in the Still of the Night all the great doo-wop songs, Silhouettes, Get a Job. And so this is how the, the germ of the whole thing got going. Um, and as I say, uh, we did it some, we had to change the name because Kingsman was, for the public, was the Louis Louis boys. So we came up with Shana Now, which is like a nonsense syllable. And, uh, and lo and behold, our... 12th gig or so was the Woodstock Festival. August 18, 1969, Shanana performs on the fourth day of the historical music concert Woodstock. Now, you opened up for Jim, Jimi Hendrix, correct? Well, we were, of all the, all the acts that played, we were second to last, so we were on right before Hendrix. And actually, we are indebted to Jimi Hendrix greatly because for several reasons. When just a little before this, we were about to hang it up. We didn't know what to do with this this twelve man at the time group. So we we went down to a club in uh, Hell's Kitchen called the Steve Paul Scene, and that was the hangout for uh, you know rock stars. And uh, we did a two week run, and then we noticed that Janis Joplin was there, and Frank Zappa was there, and Led Zeppelin was there, and then Jimi Hendrix. And Jimi started coming down multiple nights. He just really enjoyed it, dug what we were doing. And the last night the club was open, and the last night of our run, he got the producers of Woodstock down to see us, Lang and Cornfeld. And uh, we were hired on the spot. And we got uh, $350, but that check bounced, and we got a dollar to be in the movie. Yeah, wow. But we spent a long weekend trying to get on. And, of course, after Sunday night, where the, you know, it rained like crazy, and this was like a, a, a mud field. Uh, when the stage was thinking they have electrical problems, they went to Jimmy and said, we want you to close the show, which was his deal. He played last, and Jimmy said, no, he, he, he didn't want to close the show yet because there are some bands, there was a handful of bands that waited all weekend and didn't get on, like 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 us. And so we got our 35 minutes Monday morning just before Jimi Hendrix. 
And so he sort of saved our career twice. Wow. So because of Jimi Hendrix, that enhanced the Sha Na Na brand, huh? Uh, yeah, you know, because we, we, they woke up the film crew and we made it into the, the film. We were at the hop in the film. And actually, it was interesting. I didn't know this until later. There was a young film editor who cut all the Sean and Art footage, and that was Martin Scorsese. Wow. Yeah, so that's, 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 that's a big just remarkable. Right now, now, because of Sean and Art's style of wardrobe, style of play in that Woodstock concert, the 1950s nostalgia craze took off in the big screen, you know, with American Graffiti, Happy Days, Grease. That was all attributed, attributed to you, uh, Jocko, and Shanana. Well, in some ways, and of course, we played Johnny Casino and the Gamblers in the movie Grease, and uh, Screaming Scott co-wrote Sandy that Travolta sang, and, you know, it, it, was, a, it was a great era, and the it always goes in cycles, and I've been noticing lately that a lot of people are using, quote, oldies uh, in advertising again. You know, it's, it's great music, and uh, it will always be there. Now, Jocko, from 69 to 71, the band opened for Springsteen, the Kinks, the Grateful Dead. Can you share some stories, if you recall, about any well, of those but, legendary uh, groups? Well, here's, here's the deal. It's the other one, Springsteen. He opened to us. He did? Yeah, we did a run in New Jersey, uh, and Bruce and the book of the guys were our opening act. And Billy Joel was our opening act, and Teach and Chan was our opening act. Wow. And, you know, we did a lot of festivals, too. Uh, you know, multi list of bands playing in those festivals, including some with Hendrix and some with Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, Richie Haven. So, and but in reality, we we really uh, Hall and Oates opened up to us because we were you know commanding a, 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 a audience with a great energy and uh, and the, the love of the, of the music. Well, like I said, they use your style in American Graffiti and Happy Days. I mean, you were. I mean, you guys were the the king of the hill. Well. I got to agree with you. Another historic feat, um, Jocko, in the group's legacy was when Shanana opened for Lennon and Yoko Ono. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was at Madison Square Garden. It was called the One to One Concert with Stevie Wonder, Roberta Flack, Shanana, and of course uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono with the uh, Elephants Memory Band. And uh, that was that was a great evening and. And also, at the end, John invited all of us up on stage, and we all sang Give Peace a Chance, which was one of the great memories I have of uh, being in show business. Just amazing. We're talking to the legendary Jocko of Sha Na Na. Uh, Jocko, one of my favorite shows as a kid growing up was the Sha Na Na TV show, which he had from 77 to 81. How did that show develop, and, well, and how were those all, moments I... like for you having a TV series? I have to correct you. You never grew up. Well, you know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so the TV show, yeah, it was it was pretty cool because we had had a nice run, you know, with '69 to about '75, uh, and uh, we had toured internationally and it had gold records, et cetera. And uh, you know, we were about to really to think of packing it in, you know. But then Procter & Gamble came to us, and they were looking to do a monkeys-like show. And they went to the Beast Boys and said no. They weren't talking to each other. Chicago didn't want to do it. And we were sort of perfect for it because we were, we were uh, musicians, we were singers, and we were actors. We had a lot of guys who had study acting. I had studies since I was a kid. And I was in the Columbia Players. So... We did a pilot in 75, and uh, it took off. We ended up doing 97 half hours of the TV show for four years, and then, then it ran in syndication after that, uh, sometimes, you know, five nights a week. So it was like having a hit record. 
And, you know, see, we, we were a funny animal. We didn't have to depend on, you know, record sales. So we had some big records. We were in all medias. We were in uh, the, all the documentary of Woodstock. Uh, and then our TV show. And then in the middle of the TV show, we were asked to play Johnny Casino and the Gamblers in the movie Grease. And we have more songs on that soundtrack than any other artist. So it's it's all been good. And rock and roll is here to stay, evidently. No question. And, and that's my next question. 1978, Travolta's Grease hit the cinema, right? And Shanana made an appearance in that classic film. Can you tell us about being in Greece? Do you recall if you were the only group that was offered a spot in that movie, or did you have other groups that you had to compete with? No, we, we were, they came to us because we were, we were perfect for what they needed. They wanted to augment the, uh, the oldies, um, really the, the songs, rather, that they had from the, the Broadway play. And we, we added the classic rock and roll hits. You know, Blue Moon, Tears on My Pillow, Hound Dog, and uh, et cetera. And so we really, uh, it was a nice juxtaposition. And so it really turned out great for everybody. Jocko, a couple of questions. The best concert you ever performed in and why? Uh, You know, it was one night at Madison Square Garden. We had done Boston the night before, and some of our guys, it was the height of a TV show, and some of our guys wanted to sleep in in Boston, but it didn't work out because, you know, uh, there were guys who were very profile on the TV show. They they couldn't get out of Boston because of a blizzard. But, of course, in New York, everybody took the subway, and the, the Madison Square Garden was full. So I remember going out there, and I had an old friend who was, I had tickets for, and I went out and got him because I needed a guitarist out of the uh, VIP section. I said, you know, you're going to come on and play with us. So we had like six of us, and uh, I said, you know, good evening. Some of us couldn't make it, blah, 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 and boo, and but the rest of us are here. We want to rock and roll. Yay. So... We did a great rock and roll set, including that that guy in the audience was Elliot Randall, who wow. uh, played "Are You Reeling in the Years," but he did his version of "Lo Bombo," which which killed in New York City. We're talking to the legendary Jocko of Shanana. Jocko, take me back if you can to you when you were a kid growing up. Did you have hobbies, play any sports, or music was what you wanted to do? Well, I came from a family of football players, and I was actually all state out of uh, Massachusetts. I was, you know, from Quincy, Mass. And what position uh, did I, you play? I was pulling guard. I was, and, and I played linebacker. But I was a guard and got scholarship offers from six or seven different universities, including the uh, Columbia College. But I, uh, you know, I had to go tell coach after my uh, sophomore summer I said coach I just played at Woodstock and I have a two record deal and he gave me his blessing which was very cool of him and uh, and I then I, I went full time into rock and roll and, and got out of football which is probably good Man, there's so, there's so many questions I can ask you. The Shanana group appeared in two documentaries, as, as you mentioned. You mentioned the Woodstock one in 1970. Shanana also appeared in the Festival Express in 2003, right? Yeah, that was a cool, cool one. What it do you remember strange. about the Festival Express? Can you share any uh, insights here? Yeah, well, there was a train that went across Canada. And Delaney and Bonnie and uh, Janis Joplin and I can't remember. Oh, I guess the Grateful Dead. We they were on a stop that we were on, and uh, the band was on a stop. So we only did a couple of shows, but you know, uh, it was uh, legendary. And they in the film they used rock and roll to say to stay as as the people demanded that it would be a free concert. 
I think people got spoiled by Woodstock thinking that every show should be free. Now, now also, you're still performing. The band is still performing, right? Yep. So when's your next concert? 20, 25, 25 shows a year. And, of course, we're celebrating our 50th this year. And, uh, you know, we deliver. It's, we have a great entertaining show, great musicians, great harmonies. And uh, I think we meet expectations of being entertained, but also hearing the music done correctly. We don't try to fix it because they're not broken. And, uh, you know, it's, there's all different shades of rock and roll. There's rock and roll, there's doo-wop, there's rockabilly. And uh, we, we cover them all with seven vocalists. And that Grease soundtrack has to be one of the best movie soundtracks of all time. I mean, the hits, Born to Hand Jive, on that track, those magic changes. We're going to play a few of those tracks at the end of the program. What do you remember most about, uh, do you remember working with John Travolta? How was it working with John Travolta at that time? Yeah, it was, it was cool. You know, we, there was an old piano in the gym where we were shooting for, for a week and a half, and we'd, we'd huddle around the piano on breaks and sing doo-wop, and John would chime in. And uh, he was a very, very good guy, very, very talented. And, of course, Grease busted him wide open, you know. And if you're welcome, uh, Jocko, to mention your website, any other merchandise, promotional material you want to mention here, you have the yeah. Uh, stage. Yeah, the 50th. Go to shalana.com for our, you know, our concert schedule. But definitely check out this 50th anniversary edition of Shalana. There's some great stuff on it. Check it out. I'll be there. I'll be square. And, Jocko, we're going to play a couple of uh, the, the, the tracks that you sent over. I appreciate your time, and I want to do it again. You got it, buddy. All right. Take care of yourself. God bless. Say hi to everybody in Quincy, Mass. Yes, I will. Take care. Right. Sean, you. if we could play some Sha Na Na, let's hit it. And we got just one thing left to say to you, and you know it's true. Rock and roll is here to stay. <laughs> Four o'clock rock, five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock rock, nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Don't be home. We're going to have some fun. Five o'clock right now. We're going to rock. Come on. I'm going to raise a fuss. I'm going to raise a holler. Why don't we get out some of this Italian dollar? We're the call the baby if we try to make a date. The boss says, No doubt, son, you gotta work late. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do. Cause there ain't no cue for the summertime. Dude. I'm coming on fast. I'm a hanging girl. Try to pass me, man. And that was uh, Sha Na Na, and the website is shanana.com. Thank you so much, Jocko, for being on the program today. want to mention uh, Woodstock 50th anniversary. Happy birthday to Woodstock. The next few shows, we're going to have some other guests on the program to speak about that legendary historic concert, Woodstock, which uh, took place in 1969. It happened in August, which is uh, this month, and I wanted to have Jocko in to share some memories, and that's what this show is all about. Uh, the, uh, theory, uh, the TV series of Sha Na Na, which was hosted by Sha Na Na, it ran from 77 to 81, and it was really one of the most uh, watched shows during syndication at that time. The show was produced by a gentleman named Pierre Cassette, 
Original, originally distributed by LBS Communications. The show, the show featured the group performing hits from the 1950s and 60s, as Jocko mentioned, with comedy skits. And it was a variety show. Uh, they had a lot of road acts, and uh, it, it moved to some type of comedy. So Shanana was really a mainstream, uh, iconic group that weren't only performing musical hits, but they also did comedy, they did sketches, and they were really pioneers of the time. Uh, the members of Sha Na Na was the famous John Bowser Bauman for vocals, who I, I used to love Bowser, where he used to flex his muscles. John Bowser Bauman. Lenny Baker was on sax and vocals. Johnny Contardo was on vocals. And Danny Dirty Dan McBride was on guitar and vocals for Sha Na Na. And the great Jocko was on drums and vocals. So, uh, you know, it was an honor to have Jocko here. Uh, there was also, as we mentioned, also uh, what raised Sha Na Na to fame was that uh, documentary of Woodstock from 1970, which was, uh, as Jocko mentioned, Martin Scorsese was involved. And also, that, that was in 1970, Woodstock, the documentary, and also what I asked um, Jocko about, Festival Express, which was another documentary in 2003. Sha Na Na also appeared in the 1978 film Grease, which with John Travolta, and that really, uh, just great songs there. Those magic changes were in that movie, Born to Hand Jive. Also, there were versions of Elvis Presley's cover, Hound Dog, uh, Blue Moon from 56, and a, a cover of the Imperials, uh, the, the Imperial song, Tears of My Pillow, which, uh, which was from 1958, which was covered in the film. And also that great song, Rock and Roll is Here to Stay, as Jocko mentioned. And the song Sandy Sung by John Travolta in the film was co-written, from what I understand, specifically for the film by Sha Na Na Screamin', Scott Simon. So, you know, Sha Na Na is a pioneer group who performed in that historic concert, Woodstock. And, you know, like I mentioned, it's Woodstock's 50th uh, birthday, and I wanted someone on the program to represent Woodstock, and it was great to have uh, Jocko join the, the, the show. Uh, let's see what else. Um, now, I didn't know Jocko was a football player, so he said he was a football player. And, um, and he had all the, as he mentioned on this program, all those bands actually opened from, for Sha Na Na, like Springsteen and Billy Joel. So that's how big Sha Na Na was. I mean, it's just crazy. And, you know, they used other movies like American Graffiti, Happy Days with the leather jackets, the slick back hair, Grease, all that originated, originated from Sha Na Na. And it's, you know, they're a historic group. And to have Jocko on the program was really uh, legendary. Now, um, I wanted to quickly mention, uh, uh, let's, let's turn over to the uh, sports collectibles. Uh, did you hear this story a couple of weeks ago? Uh, there was a trading card of, from 2019, the year 2019, of the uh, pitcher Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber was issued by the Topps Company, and in the back of Shane Bieber's 2019 Topps baseball card, they made an error, and they put Justin Bieber. So apparently, this happened a couple of weeks ago. I, I didn't get a chance to talk about it, but it's newsworthy. So apparently on Shane Bieber's 2019 Topps baseball card, the bio on the back of the card, they put Topps, the Topps company put Justin Bieber, and I, apparently... All of Justin Bieber's fans on Twitter, which he had, uh, I would say, hundreds of millions of fans, uh, communicated with Justin Bieber on his Twitter feed saying, you know, that on Shane Bieber's baseball card, they mentioned your name. So it's really outrageous era done by the Topps company, and some of those cards are available for sale on eBay. So if you, type, if you go into ebay.com and you type in, 2019 Topps Shane Bieber era card. You can actually purchase one, and they're affordable. They're, you can find one for like 20 bucks, but it's something worth having because you can hold on to it, and in a few years, I would think it would be worth some money with that, with that era 
printing on the back of Shane Bieber's 2019 baseball card in which they tops, the Topps Company printage Justin Bieber. It's just outrageous. Well, thank you, Jocko, so much for being on the program. Happy collecting to all.